So, now we are going to speak about electrical double layer. So, the electrical double layer is an extremely important topic that uh, should be treated in order to understand not only the um, way in which, for instance, an electrolyte deriving charge inside this medium is able to close the circuit with a charge compensation mechanism, but is also crucial in a lot of other different types of science, for instance, formulation science, in which uh, basically the deal view theory or, more in general, the thermodynamic stability of a dispersed system is uh, treated, taking consider about uh, the electrical double layer formed on the surface of a dispersed species and the medium, the dispersing phase. So, basically, electrical double layer represents uh, the way in which we can ensure the electroneutrality of a system even if there are some zones having a specific charge excess. What does it mean? So let's take in consider, for instance, since we are speaking now about electrochemistry, an electron. And now let's imagine to have one electrode, one working electrode, for instance, here, in a cell, with the corresponding counter Electrode. So now, in order to understand better actually what is an electrical double layer, let's imagine to consider an electrolytic cell. What does it mean? That we are applying a current, we are applying a voltage with a potentiometer, in particular instrument, in order to promote a certain reaction. But in general, here what we are doing is polarizing negatively one electrode. And obviously, from the other hand, we are polarizing, maybe positively, the other electron. So we are ensuring a flow of electrons in this direction, in this way. And obviously, we are in a medium, the electrolyte. So basically, we can say that uh, uh, both for what concerns a galvanic cell or uh, in a electrolytic cell, the situation that we are looking now, in the moment in which the electrode is placed inside a solution, inside an electrolyte, we have a charge acquisition mechanism. What does it mean? That on the surface of the electrode we can appreciate an excess of charge. It could be negative or the corresponding positive excess. Obviously, this is not only true for what is not true only for what concerns uh, electrodes, but just things about, for instance, some clays as montmorillonite or other types of inorganic particles. In the moment in which these inorganic particles, these clays, are introduced, for instance, in water, due to a reticular replacement and isomorphous substitution we can appreciate the presence of negative charge on the surface of these particles. Or sometimes, this is for instance the case of metal oxides at silica, titania and alumina, we can uh, appreciate the generations of charge on the surface of these materials when these materials, these oxides, are introduced in water due to the dissociations of specific group in according with the pH value. So, in general, what is important is that every time in which we are introducing something in that is solid, maybe in a medium, we can have a charge acquisition mechanism. And every time we have a charge acquisition mechanism, we have an electrical double layer. In this case, the charge acquisition mechanism is due to the movement of electrons. And so we have the acquisitions of a certain charge excess here and the corresponding uh, opposite charge in the other electrode. So, obviously, what is important to say is that uh, we need to close the circuit. When, if we want to ensure the working of a battery, we need to close the circuit. And so we need to introduce a medium that it should be able to close the circuit. And in which way this can happen? 
Well, this can happen due to the presence of specific ion, since we know very well that from the previous lesson, electrolyte is able to ensure the movement of ions, but not the movement of electrons that must to pass uh, uh, through the external circuit. So in general, we have something that is able to uh, promote the movements of ions, and so we can have ions. If we want to make this uh, picture more clear, we can use different color. For instance, we can imagine that the negative excess of charge on this electrode is in blue, due to the entrance of electrons inside this material, and we will see how in this way we are increasing the Fermi energy, and we will see this concept in a further lesson, the bridge between the Fermi energy and the fermi dirac distribution, and uh, uh, the meaning of the polarization. But this is another concept. So we have here a negative excess, and we have here a positive excess, the corresponding one. Since that for each single electron that is collected here, we need to have one electron that is asking from this material. Obviously, the electron neutrality of this system should be maintained, and so we have this flow of electron in this direction. So, in the electrolyte, we have charge. In the electrolyte, we have charge, and this charge are positive cations, and we have negative anion. Obviously, the number it should be. Uh, or um, the number of charge, obviously, and not the number of ions, the number of charge should be present in order to ensure the electron neutrality. So in the moment in which the circuit is open here, we do not have uh, a real, uh, or better, yes, we can have a certain electric as double layer, but it's quite uh, um, small, so it's not so evident. And we have uh, uh, quite balanced concentrations of negative and positive charge in each single point of the medium. But in the moment in which we are closing the circuit and we are inducing this polarization, what is happening is that these cations can feel the presence of this negative charge, whereas the negative charge, these anions, can feel the presence of positive charge. So we are creating an electric field between this electron and this electron that is responsible for the movement of the electron, of the, of the ions. And so we have that these cations tend to migrate on this direction, and from the other hand, the negative ones follow the opposite direction. And so what is happening? that we are creating a compensation on the surface of the two electrode. We have a compensation. But what does it mean, a compensation? So, let's change the situation. Since now, what is happening is that we have described how basically, since we have an electric field inside the medium, we have the movement of positive cations trying to compensate with a compensation mechanism. This is what a compensation mechanism means. We are trying to fight this negative excess induced due to the polarization just with the presence of ions, in this case cations, and in this case anions. This physical structure, we can say structure, this physical layer created due to the um, compensation mechanisms is take the names of electrical double layer. So this is an electrical double layer. Since it's composed of two different types of charge that are characterized with an opposite sense. But uh, there are a lot of different types of uh, um, electrical double layer. 
And so we need now to understand, basically, which are the different types of model imagined in order to describe the, what it could be the behavior of a charge, negative and positive, in order to compensate this excess. So basically, the, f the very beginning, the first um, model studied is the Hellman's one. So, in the next lesson, we will see the Hellman's model, the Gowie Chapman model, the Stern, and even the Graham. So, the most known models that, with specific surrounding conditions, are able to describe with different degree of uh, um, precision what is actually happening during a composition mechanism during the creation of an electrical double layer.